Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. so here's the story. A while ago I was playing Dyson Sphere Program, it's an awesome factory automation game similar to the likes of Factorio or Satisfactory, I even made a game dev review with some interesting game design lessons, so I was playing it a lot and I thought, well why don't I try to make my own mini factory game, it's one of my favorite genres to play but I never actually made my own. So that's exactly what I did, tried to see how fast I could make the simplest version of the genre. In total, I worked on this minigame for about 16 hours, and I'm quite pleased with the end result. It's got all of the base mechanics you would expect, as well as a nice amount of polish. After watching this video, you can go ahead and play it for yourself on the Steam app. It did involve some interesting challenges that are specific to this genre, which I'll go over in a bit. And 16 hours is a pretty small amount of time, considering the complexity of the design and the number of features. That means that if I was making this while working a regular 9-to-5 job, I could get this minigame done within about a month. And that's sort of what I did. I'm always working on multiple projects and multiple videos at the same time, so each is kind of its own side project. So let's see how I managed to get all of this done in such a short amount of time. But before we see that, do you want to learn how to make games from a veteran in the games industry? Then check out this video's sponsor, Jason Wyman, who makes some great game development courses. They are all extremely detailed and very well planned with expert life support whenever you need help. As a special deal, you can get the CodeMonkey course bundle, which includes not one, but all three courses for the price of one. It's a great guided path that will teach you how to make games from beginner to advanced. Learn all about C Sharp with the programmer course, then master Unity along with all of its tools, and finally dive deep into the Code Architecture course, where you will learn how to structure your games and write good, clean code to help you make even better games. Jason is a veteran in the industry with many years of experience working on large teams and very complex AAA projects. Through the course, you also gain access to an exclusive Discord server where you can chat and share ideas with fellow students. Also, as a bonus, if you pick up the course bundle through the link, you get Steam keys for all of my games as a nice free bonus, along with a mug, hoodie, and discount on future courses. So, if you want to learn how to make games, check out the link in the description. Now, as I try to mention as much as possible on this channel, if you want to be a successful indie game developer, you should always write clean code so you can easily reuse it in the future. So for my starting project, instead of starting from a completely empty new project, I started directly from the grid building system that I made recently. In that video, I showcase how to make it using City Builder as an example, but I also mention how you can use it to place down any object. It doesn't have to be just a city. I can use it to place down resource nodes and conveyor belts, so it's perfect just for this use case. In about 60 minutes, I took the code from that video and just made some new object types, making some resource nodes, some buildings and some belts, and everything was working flawlessly. So this really shows you the power of writing clean reusable code. I first made the underlying grid class over two years ago, and then I made the building system on top of it just a few weeks ago, and now I'm using it to very quickly get a game up and running. So with that, I had some objects placed down, and now it was time to think of how they should work. By the way, if you find the video helpful, please hit the like button. It's a tiny thing, but it really does help. Thanks. Actually, even before I started the project, I first made a very rough sketch of the game design that I was going for. Personally, I don't like to think on paper in terms of design, and then when I've thought enough, then I get to writing code. So I wanted the simplest form of a factory automation game as possible. I defined just two base resource types, then processed versions of those resources, and a final item that gets crafted from those resources. Just to find the buildings needed to make all of that work, along with some conveyor belts, and that's pretty much it. That was my rough base design. You should always have a basic idea of what you're trying to accomplish, otherwise you'll just be spinning your wheels without knowing where you're trying to reach. So I got to work on implementing that design. First logic I handled was the mining machine, just something that generates resources over time. Thanks to how I structured my code it was super easy to add, just make a script that inherits from my generic placed object class and attach it to the prefab. Then just write a very simple timer code and that's pretty much it, the mining machine is generating resources. Next up, I started working on the grabber. It's supposed to grab an item from one location and place it in another. So all I needed to know was to grab the grid position from the grab position and the grid position from the drop position. With those two, I can then look in the grid and see if there are any buildings placed on those two positions. It's very simple and just with this, I already had an interesting interaction between these two buildings. Now, after grabbing the item, I want to drop it. So it was time to make some conveyor belts. Again, I made the building and the script attached to it. The goal was to take whatever item is on top and move it to the next position, and for that to work, they all need to know what is the next position which is defined by the rotation of the object. 
And by the way, sometimes I post GIFs with what I'm working on in the YouTube community or on Twitter. So if you want to see what I'm working on as I'm doing it, then make sure you're following me there. Now there's one really interesting thing that requires some trickery to make it work that you might never have thought about if you've never made a game in this genre. So a simple question, how do you move objects in the conveyor belts? It seems simple, doesn't it? You start on this belt, and then if it has an item, you check if there's space on the next belt and you move the item. Then you check the next belt, again, see if this one has an item and if the space is clear, and if so, move the item. Simple enough. But now comes the tricky part. Let's say you first test this belt instead of the other one. This one will test for the next belt if it is empty, and right now it's not empty, so it does not move. Same thing for the next one. This one is full, so it does not move. In the end, the only one that moves is the very first one and all of the other items stay stuck. So if you're not careful, you end up with belts that only move if there's one empty spot in between the atoms. One solution to that is to start moving the atoms from the last position in the belt and move backwards. That means we need to keep track of each belt path, so where it starts and where it ends. That was one of the tasks that took the longest time to implement, about two hours trying to wrap my head around how I could set all of this up. I need to create a belt system to handle all the belts, all of their connections and sort them all correctly. It was very tricky to get it all working, in fact I had a handful of infinite loops that just crashed Unity. One issue was with loops, the way the code identifies the first belt is by essentially going backwards through the path. Well, if the path loops, then by doing that logic it will continue going on and on and on. So yeah, that was a very tricky system with a bunch of issues and some weird edge cases. In the end, I got a really nice system, I can place belts anywhere and the system automatically detects and groups and merges various belts into a handful of paths. It was very tricky to do, but the end result looks great. I even made a handy debug visual so I could see exactly where each belt starts and ends. For the timing of the belts, I once again reused a very useful class that I covered in a video two years ago, the Time Tick system. This is something that I've used in pretty much all of my Steam games. For example, in Blueprint Tycoon, all of the logic on the blueprints runs on a tick instead of on every update. That's an excellent way for keeping everything in sync and also saving up on performance. So here I define the tick as every 200 milliseconds and made the belts work on that. Every tick, the belt system listens to it and takes an action on every single belt. With the belts working, the next task was finishing up work on the grabbers. They need to grab items from one position and drop in another. While making this game, I was always thinking about keeping a good clean code architecture. So instead of interacting directly with a specific item type, instead I have two interfaces. One for holding world items, another one for storing just virtual items. World items means they already exist in the world, whereas the stored items are simply a number. I covered interface in detail in another video, they are extremely useful. Essentially I can make the code work with the interfaces and that means it automatically works with anything that implements those interfaces. So the grabber works directly with those interfaces so it can work with all kinds of buildings. It can grab or drop an item from anything that implements either the storage or the world item slot. So it's some simple code but it's extremely versatile. The next task was implementing storage and that was again extremely simple, just implement the interface and that's it. It instantly worked perfectly in conjunction with the grabbers. With that I had a working base system, still needing lots of rules but the basics were there. Buildings can be placed, the mining machine generates resources, the grabber takes those resources and drops them on a belt, the belt moves it around and the final grabber takes it from the belt and drops it in storage. Next it was time to make some proper resource item types. For this, once again, I reuse scriptable objects. I did pretty much the exact same thing that I did in my crafting system video. I defined a scriptable object for each item type and another one for each recipe. The recipes just have certain input and output items along with the type, amount and the effort needed to craft. Again, using scriptable objects is an excellent way to keep things nicely organized and with this I have all my discrete objects in my project files for each item type. With the item types defined, then it was time to finally use them. This was also the point when I made the live stream. I needed to keep working on the game, so I figured if I'm going to work on it, I might as well make it a live stream just in case people want to watch me work. That was quite a bit of fun, answering questions from chat and having all of those people alongside me. I'll probably do more live streams whenever I do another project like this one. It wasn't really pre-planned, I only set it up 30 minutes before, so make sure you hit the bell icon so you know whenever I do another one. So the next goal was to make the smelter to finally have some proper crafting. I wanted to turn iron ore into iron ingots. Handling the crafting was relatively simple. Again, I defined a scriptable object for the item recipes. It has some inputs and some outputs. Then the crafting itself is just a simple flow timer. And after some time, the base items get consumed and the final item is created. So it's some pretty simple logic. 
Up until this point, the items were still manual, so I was manually saying that the grabber was instantiating a specific type of items, and also, up until this point, the money machine had some resource generation, but it wasn't based on anything. So the next task was to add some rules to that. I needed to identify what resources were in range and how many. But before I could add that logic, I first needed to place down some resource nodes on the map. So I made a simple script that let me place them in the editor and they get spawned as soon as the map starts. With that, I had some starting iron and gold resource nodes, then on the mining machine to identify those resources. On my Builder Defender game that I made for my complete course, in there for the resource logic, I made it using a physics cast, but since this game is grid based, I defined a grid shape instead. I went for the simplest thing possible, just a basic square shape. If it is within a certain number of cells on the X and Y, then it is within range. So just ask the grid if there's a resource node in that position, if so, grab the type. With that, I now had two resource node types, and by placing the mining machine near each of them, I could mine different resources. Next up, it was getting tricky to identify the item types without proper icons. So for that, thankfully, I already had some items drawn from many years ago. About five years ago, I made Blueprint Tycoon and I drew a bunch of items for that. And thankfully, I had exactly what I needed. I had some gold ore, gold ingots, iron ore, iron ingots, and also a computer. So that's another benefit when you work on mini games over many years. You end up building a library of not just code, but also assets. So I quickly added those to the game and everything started to take shape. At this point, I had resource nodes, I could place mining machines and mine those resources, then some grabbers to grab them and drop them in the belts, and then further ahead added smelters to make ingots. And finally, just for testing, I could add another smelter to turn those ingots into computers. So really awesome stuff. This was when the livestream ended. It was actually quite productive. Thank you if you joined me on the livestream. If you want to be notified whenever I go live next, make sure you hit the bell icon. So the game was looking good, but still tons more to do. Next up, it was making some sort of UI. Up until this point, there was really no proper UI at all. I started making the UI for the smelter to be able to click on it to choose a recipe. It's pretty simple to do, just make some templates, go through the code and set them up. Then with a button, I make it change the recipe scriptable object on the smelter. Also, it was super easy to add the window track ability since I already did that in a previous video. Just add the script and everything works. And with that, the smelter UI was functional. Then at this point, the game was close to being done in terms of functionality, so it was time to get some proper working visuals. I went through all of the asset packs that I bought over the years and grabbed a bunch of assets. I made some blue rocks for the iron, some yellow for the gold. Then I drew some simple moving arrows for the conveyor belts, made a simple grabber, added a bunch of props and buildings to make the storage, mining machine and smelter. So it's all composed of various props, they honestly really don't make much sense. I mean, why does the mining machine have a truck, or why does the assembler have a huge cooler? So it looks weird, but anyways, it does work. The game now had some proper visuals. Then making some proper UI buttons, I just took some screenshots from the prefabs and made some icons. Making good visuals, or even just choosing good visuals, is definitely not my strong point, but I'm quite happy with this look. I'm especially happy with the UI buttons, I think they look really good having the icon pop out from the background. Next up, it was adding some particle effects, then making the map a bit bigger and more interesting, playing around the terrain, adding some grass, some rocks, then a bunch of sound effects, and then it was just polishing a bit of everything, and here's the final result. Alright, so here I am, starting off on the game, so just got a terrain with a bunch of bushes, a bunch of rocks and things, and as you can see, all of the various resource nodes. So first we want to gather some resources. So over here I've got my icons for all of the various building types. So I've got my mining machine, and as soon as I click, it enables the town map to show the buildable and non-buildable areas. So right now I can simply go and place a mining machine near my iron ore, and now it's going to be mining iron. So if I click on it, I can see that it is already mining. So next up, I want to grab the items from the mining machine, so I can press R to just rotate. And now the grabber will be grabbing items from this grid position onto this grid position. So if I now just place a belt on top of it, Yep, there you go, now it starts grabbing the items that the mining machine is mining. Alright, so that's the first step. Next up, I've got these basic items. This is just iron ore, and the next thing I want to do is convert it into ingots. So over here, the other building type is the smelter. So I can go, I can rotate it, and place it. And in order to feed the items onto the smelter, I need the grabber, so just rotate it and place it. Then I can click on the smelter itself to open up the nice UI where I can select what recipe I want to do. So in this case, I want to make some iron ingots. So the grabber is going to input all of the iron ore, and over there we've got the crafting, and after crafting is done, yep, got some outputs. 
So here I've got a lot of the basics already working. So I've got some resource nodes, I've got a mining machine, I've got a grabber that takes items from one place and puts them in another. I've got the conveyor belt which constantly moves the items around and another one which takes an item and processes it into another item type. Okay, so over here I've got some iron ingots and then let's say I want to grab them and I want to dump them in storage. So this is another building type. So just storage, place it in there and I bring those in there. And just replace the last position with a grabber so I can also demolish buildings. So just go place it in there and there you go. Now my storage is indeed receiving iron ingots. Alright, so this is the most basic thing. Now let's do the same thing over here to gather some gold ore. Alright, so there it is. Now I've got another production line. So this one is mining some gold ore, then moves it around, puts it on the smelter and the smelter converts gold ore into gold ingots. Okay, now for another building type, over here we have the assembler. So this is what makes some more complex building assembly. So let's place it over here. There you go, it looks really nice. And again, I can click on it and see what can I build. So I can build some computers or some microchips. So let's make some microchips first. And this one actually requires gold ingots and then copper ingots. So copper is another resource type placed all the way over here. Alright, I've got copper being produced, and as soon as it is, then it gets placed over here in storage. So now comes another really interesting feature, which is that the grabbers can actually grab just a specific type. So over here I've got my storage, I want to grab just what I need. So I just need some gold and copper, so let's grab those. So I'm going to place these grabbers, these two, and now I can click on the grabber and I can set a certain filter. So this one will grab anything, this one will grab nothing, or a specific item type. So in this case, let's grab some copper ingots. And on the next one, we're going to grab just the gold ingots. And as I put them, yep, there you go, now it does start grabbing. So now just feed them into the assembler, and it will now start assembling some microchips. So now with microchips, let's just make some laptops. Alright, so there you go. So I've got some microchips coming out of here, and they go in there, and we're starting to make some laptops. And then finally, just dump them into this storage. Just like this, there's already a really nice base here, so I can continue expanding upon this. Alright, so I just built something really nice using all these mechanics, and as you can see, yep, this definitely looks like a factory automation mini game. So all the resources going in, all of them being crafted, and my final output in here, so everything is looking really nice. Alright, so this was really interesting to make. You can play it for yourself on the Steam app, you can also download the project files to see how everything works for yourself, and most of what I built here I covered in separate tutorials. The core of it is the grid building system, which I covered in detail in another video, and the base for the grid system, which was also made in several videos that you can find on the playlist. So check the links in the description for references to all of those videos. Also, hit the bell icon if you want to be notified the next time I go live working on my next project. And don't forget to check out Jason Wyman's courses with the link in the description. Get the Code Monkey bundle and enjoy all of my games as a free bonus. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.